I'm now going to introduce uh, Professor Vieran Corsar, uh, who's going to uh, kick off our, our series on um, some of the communities that are often not uh, discussed or talked about as much as, as the ones that you often hear about. So the Croatian, Croatian Levantines in Ottoman Istanbul. Um, and uh, Vieran uh, is an associate professor of history and Hungarian, Turkish and Judaic studies at the University of Zagreb. He has published on topics of Ottoman ethno-confessional, legal and social history, mainly related to Bosnia, the Balkans and Istanbul. He's the author of Croatian Levantines in Ottoman Istanbul, published in uh, this year, uh, and co a co-editor of Evliya Celebi in the Borderlands, New Insights and Novel Approaches to the Seyahatname uh, Western Balkans and Iran section. So this is the big um, famous book of travels, 17th century book of travels um, uh, all around the Ottoman Empire. Um, we know Bjeran well in 2015, uh, we uh, wrote up an interview with him and you can see the link on the page if you'd like to see uh, more about Vieran and learn about his work um, please do go to uh, our website and look at interview number eight. So without further ado I'm going to stop sharing and uh, welcome uh, Professor Vieran Kosa to talk to, about, talk to us about Croatian Levantines in Ottoman Istanbul. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, here. Uh, it's an honor uh, to give a talk here, especially to uh, some of the subjects of my uh, book, to the Levantines uh, themselves. Uh, so uh, I will now start share screen. Uh, okay. Okay, this is my presentation. Just a second. Mm. Okay, we see that. Um, just a second. Let's go to slideshow. Okay, we? okay. Okay, this is it. Uh, the talk is about the Croatian Levantines in uh, Ottoman Istanbul, which is uh, the topic of my book that was published uh, this September in Istanbul. Uh, uh, since this is not a, a book launch, I will not talk in detail about my book. Uh, instead, I will uh, choose several topics uh, which, I, uh, which summarize the main themes uh, of the book. Uh, the project itself uh, started uh, actually more than 10 years ago uh, when I was uh, preparing a script for the documentary, uh, documentary film uh, Creations on the Bosporus for Croatian television together with uh, Dr. Vesna Miovic from uh, Dubrovnik. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that film was finished in 2011. And then I made a smaller uh, script for a smaller uh, documentary, uh, Zelic Printers to the Empire, about uh, at, at the time uh, famous, but now uh, almost forgotten uh, f uh, print, uh, printing house and the family. Uh, from uh, from Galata, Istanbul. Uh, since that was at the time a side project for me, uh, now I returned after 10 years to the same topic. In the meantime, I was collecting some pieces of information uh, about Croatian Levantines in Istanbul. And now finally, uh, 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 it resulted in a, in a book somewhat surprising to me as well, because something that was a side project turned out to be actually uh, uh, my, my book, my first book, I, I might say. Uh, uh, in the early modern period, uh, the most numer numerous Croatian immigrants in Istanbul were Ragusans. That is the citizens of the Republic of Dubrovnik, Ragusa. Uh, which was a mercantile republic, uh, famous uh, traders, uh, mediators in trade between East and West. 
Uh, as a friendly and uh, faithful vassal state, uh, Republic of Dubrovnik and uh, its citizens enjoyed privileges that uh, stimulated migration to the Ottoman Balkans in general, and Istanbul as the greatest economic center of the empire in particular. Uh, due to the nature of the pre-modern sources, the so-called big personalities such as diplomats, rich merchants, and church dignitaries are best documented, and therefore the focus is uh, on them. Uh, that will change in the 19th century, uh, uh, which is not so uh, exclusive, uh, it's more democratic in that respect, and then uh, we have more information about uh, uh, commoners, not just elites. Uh, uh, in pre-modern times, the Ragusans figured as one of the main mediators in trade between Ottoman Empire and Western Europe, second only to Venetians. Uh, in addition to the service uh, of their own country, Ragusan diplomats, who unlike other diplomats knew Ottoman Turkish, because they, before becoming consuls, they served as dragomas, dragomans, that is, interpreters. Uh, uh, because of, 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 uh, of that knowledge, uh, they sometimes provided their services as interpreters to other foreign embassies as well, and thus played an important role behind the scenes in European diplomacy in, uh, in Istanbul. Uh, I think that was uh, probably a, a unique case that, that the, the, the consuls, the, the, the highest level diplomats, knew the Ottoman Turkish, at least in pre-modern times. There was one Dutch ambassador, and as far as I know, this was the only case that, that the ambassador knew the language. Uh, uh, in that capacity, uh, some Ragusans entered uh, into the service of European embassies, whether publicly, as Luca Barca and Luca Kiriko, the first and the second consul of Dubrovnik uh, uh, in Istanbul, who served English embassy under the ambassadors Trumbull, Sutton, K, Earl of Kimmel, or uh, Magrini, who was uh, the dragoman of the Dutch embassy. Or sometimes secretly uh, they served, uh, as far as we know, uh, uh, the embassy of Russia. Again, Luca Barca and Luca Kiriko, who thus served as uh, dragomans and uh, counselors of, uh, of the two embassies of English and uh, and secretly uh, Russian. Uh, and probably, but we don't have documents for that, uh, probably uh, uh, they served French as well. Uh, but as they say, of course, uh, 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 we, can, we can think like they, they served uh, 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 different states, but that was not the, uh, 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 against their own, uh, their own country because uh, the Dubrovnik Republic of Dubrovnik itself was actually, as, as, as a mediator, was mediating also information between, between different countries, between East and West, and so on. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the prominent Ragozans also figured as leaders not only of the Ragozan community, but of the local Roman Catholics in general. Uh, Barca was, for instance, the vice president of the Magnifica Comunita di Pera at the end of the 17th century. That was uh, uh, the association of uh, uh, Catholics of Pera, while uh, Federico Chirico was the president uh, of Magnifica Comunita uh, uh, one century later. Uh, the Ragusan diplomats also played important role for the Catholic Church at the Ottoman court. Uh, as well as uh, they also served as the donors of the local churches. Uh, in the 18th century, some of the highest Roman Catholic dignitaries in Istanbul were of Ragusan origin as well, such as patriarchal apostolic vicars Galani, Bona, Dimitri, Paolo, and Pugliesi. Uh, and uh, here, I don't know how much you can see, uh, uh, I, uh, I took uh, Kiriko family tree from the Mikhail Dimitri Sturza's book, uh, Dictionnaire Historique et Généalogique, uh, the Grand Famille de Grèce, d'Albanie et de Constantinople. Uh, there are some mistakes in this uh, tree, but it is uh, well illustrative uh, of the Kiriko family and uh, uh, who became, although the origins are from Ragusa, it became a, a, a real example of an Levantine family because they're intermarried 
with uh, other Levantine families, local Catholic families, or, or uh, some other families that came from the Western Europe as well, or the Greek islands uh, and so on. And also, uh, also what is uh, more important and which also made them maybe uh, uh, excellent diplomats was the fact not only that they knew the local language, in addition to main European languages and the Slavic, Croatian, or, uh, and, and the Russian also, because they also served Russia. Uh, on the personal level, uh, they made very good uh, networking and they uh, connected uh, uh, with, uh, with other Dragoman families. Uh, here you can see some, for instance, Dane, who was Dragoman of England, uh, Deval, who was the dragoman of France, uh, Pini, who were dragomans of Venice, uh, Hubsch, and uh, and some other, and some other. So there are many, many, many of them. Uh, so that means that uh, not only that they officially collected uh, information and uh, uh, exercised certain influence and so on, but uh, on the perhaps on the family meetings they had. They sit together at the table with uh, with dragomans from different states. So I mean that was the excellent way to discuss uh, certain things or to make some uh, uh, decisions or uh, collect informations even even on the on the on the family level. Uh, and that service for Russia continued later on uh, as well. Uh, Luka Kirikov was even appointed. Uh, at one point, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the ambassador of Russia uh, in Istanbul, but since the war started uh, with the Ottoman Empire, between Russia and the Ottoman Empire, this, uh, this appointment, was, which was signed by the Russian Empire, Emperor, uh, was never, uh, uh, was never uh, executed. So he remained, uh, remained uh, Ragozan consul. But the other part of the family uh, continued to serve uh, for the Russians, and uh, in the in the 19th century, some members of the family again served for the Russians, as far as we know. But for the secret activities, of course, uh, there are uh, uh, there are less information. Uh, uh, in the beginning of the 19th century, the Republic of Dubrovnik came to an end. Uh, then, however, with the opening of the Ottoman Empire to the world economy, new waves of Dalmatians began to arrive uh, in Istanbul in search of work. Uh, Dalmatian immigrants were among the most numerous uh, European immigrants at the beginning of the 19th century, together with Maltese. Later, they changed, uh, but uh, by the end of the century, they, uh, they numbered uh, up to five to six thousands. Uh, the majority of Croatian, uh, that is Dalmatian immigrants represented the physical workforce and proletariat. And that proletariat reputation of Croatian immigrants is attested uh, to in dictionaries of Ottoman Turkish and uh, modern Turkish. For instance, in uh, famous James Redhouse's uh, uh, dictionary, uh, Turkish and English Lexicon, which was published in uh, Beirut in 1890. Uh, word Hrvat uh, means gardeners or miners labor, while Hrvatlik or Croatianess means quality and temper of a uh, Croat, the quality of labor, field hands work or Croatia. The modern version of that dictionary uh, gives the meaning a great big man, while uh, Andrea Stice uh, in his uh, historic and etymological dictionary of Turkish uh, uh, gives the following uh, explanation. Uh, someone, creation is someone with a big bod body, untidy and someone untidily dressed. Uh, while a uh, famous uh, uh, Ottoman lex lexicographer, Shemseddin Sami Frasheri of Albanian origin, in his dictionary, Camus i Turki, uh, says Hrvat means originally the name of the population of Austria, uh, Croatian region. It refers to Slavs of Dalmatia, Slavonia, and uh, Montenegro. Uh, eventually, uh, we can conclude that at, uh, at, a, at a some point that uh, ethnic 
term, originally ethnic term, started to uh, lose uh, its strict ethnic meaning. So uh, even sometimes Mont Montenegrins work in this heavy physical uh, 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 works in Istanbul uh, are called Croats also. Uh, so it became more kind of a, a name for the profession uh, than, than the strict ethnic term sometimes. But sometimes it's obvious that, that, that it, it is about the real Croatians. And really, uh, these were the jobs that most of uh, Croatians in Istanbul uh, were uh, doing. The gardeners, bustanjis, uh, miners, uh, kawas or uh, uh, guards, and so on. These were, these were their main, main, main uh, occupations. Uh, sometimes the, uh, their, they didn't succeed and they didn't, couldn't find the job. And sometimes they uh, fell uh, below the poverty line. And at, at that point, uh, they sometimes turn to, to crimes, uh, pity theft, and so on. Uh, therefore, in Ottoman uh, archives, uh, if you look for the, for the uh, keyword Croat, Hrvat, then very often you will find some criminals uh, and so on. But this is because of the nature of the archive. Uh, someone gets, especially from, the, from this uh, uh, lower levels of society, catches uh, the attention of the state only when, uh, when he or she commit crimes. Therefore, uh, uh, very often you, you get criminals and, and so on. Uh, but majority which were just doing their jobs uh, did, did not uh, attract the attention of, of the state apparatus. Uh, on the other hand, of course, uh, some individuals uh, were uh, entrepreneurs themselves. Uh, or held important positions in uh, European-led or inspired projects that played an important role in the transfer of technology to the Ottoman Empire, uh, and thus were uh, very valued newcomers. Uh, these positions included uh, middle to high-ranking positions in mining, steamship, and railway companies, like Evaristo uh, Kiriko, who comes from this uh, famous uh, uh, diplomatic family, uh, but he was the first engineer uh, in the family. Uh, then uh, printing, of course, famous Zelish family, tobacco industry, uh, Juro Klarish, who was uh, the director of the Jibali uh, tobacco factory, uh, or cartography like uh, Jacques Pervitic, famous uh, cartographer. Uh, their activities went beyond the technical aspects uh, of production and gained uh, importance for the social and cultural life of Istanbul, especially uh, in regard to its then uh, significant uh, Levantine community, into which the Croatian immigrants assimilated soon, uh, soon after arrival. Uh, here, I, uh, uh, here I marked some of uh, decorated and awarded Croatian Levantines in Istanbul. I mentioned Luka Barka, the first permanent consul uh, in Istanbul, uh, who was decorated as the Knight of the whole, uh, of, by the Holy See of Rome. Uh, uh, here also we can, this is one of uh, 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 peculiar qualities of Croatian Levantines, uh, is uh, their connection with the Catholic Church. And really from the very beginning, from the families of uh, Barca and Kiriko, uh, until, until the recent, until the 19th century or early 20th, uh, Croatians were very often uh, very closely link, linked to the church or some uh, uh, institutions, social institutions of the Catholic Church. Uh, Luca Kiriko uh, was the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, he was also uh, the person who helped uh, uh, erection of the Church of uh, St. Anthony, Catholic Church of the St. Anthony. Uh, the new building, of course, is from the early 20th century, but in the 18th century, uh, uh, the first building was actually uh, erected with the help of uh, the French ambassador and uh, Luca. Uh, Luca Kiriko. 
Uh, George Zurich was uh, another uh, of the Raguzen consuls. He was uh, also decorated by the Pope. Uh, then Federico Kiriko, uh, he was a very interesting person because he was the last consul of the Republic of Dubrovnik, but after the Republic was abolished by the French, and that was confirmed later uh, by the Congress uh, in uh, Vienna in 1815. Uh, he uh, uh, left insignia uh, and the flag of the Republic to the, uh, to the Ottoman Sultan, uh, as he said, uh, as his uh, faithful, uh, hateful, faithful uh, vassal. And uh, then 10 years later in 1825, he entered uh, uh, the, the service of uh, Kingdom of Sardinia. And he actually became later uh, the consul of the Kingdom of Sardinia. And for uh, his services, he received the cross of the Knight of the Order and St. Maurice and Lazarus of the din dynasty of Savoy. Uh, Evaristo Kiriko, he was the engineer uh, and he uh, worked first for, uh, uh, for the Ottomans, for the Thessaly railroads. Uh, later, uh, uh, even during the war, uh, he went to Greece and then entered the service of uh, uh, Greece. And then he received uh, the medals both from the Ottomans and uh, from the Kingdom of Greece. Uh, he was the father of the famous uh, painter, uh, Giorgio de Chirico. Uh, Juro Klaric uh, was director of the tobacco factory uh, Gipoli, uh, which became uh, very, very, uh, uh, very, very uh, famous in the world. And it received uh, many awards on uh, international fairs. Uh, he received the Ottoman medal for science and arts and the commander uh, order of Mejidie. Then, uh, be, actually, before uh, coming to uh, the Ottoman Empire, he worked first in the tobacco factory in Zagreb. Then he went to Romania. Uh, for his services in Romania, he also uh, received an order for, from the Romanian crown. Uh, and after that, he came to Istanbul. And also, he got a medal from uh, Franz Josef von Habsburg. And uh, Gregor Zelic was the head of the print house Zelic. Uh, 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 under, uh, uh, under him, uh, the print house became uh, probably the most, uh, uh, most uh, prominent uh, print house in the Ottoman Empire. It uh, printed uh, hundreds of books and, uh, and other materials, including uh, postcards, uh, posters, and so on. Uh, he received, uh, uh, he became the Knight of St. Sylvester, that is another uh, pontifical uh, order, uh, silver medal of Iftihar from Sultan Abdul Hamid II, uh, medal of St. Sava of the fifth grade from the Serbian King of Alexander uh, I of Branovic. Uh, his print house was actually uh, printing uh, uh, Serbian daily, Tsarigradski Glasnik, uh, uh, which was uh, 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 which was published in Istanbul for the local uh, Serbs and for the Serbs living then in the Ottoman Empire, and also some other publications, including some textbooks. Uh, and also, interestingly, he received also, uh, that will interest Fariba, probably uh, the Medal of uh, the Order of Lion and the Son of the Third Grade uh, from the Persian Shah uh, Muzaffer Eddin. Uh, he uh, published one uh, publication uh, 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 for uh, one Persian uh, prince in, uh, in Persian language. And that was something that was uh, uh, probably that made uh, this print house so famous, the possibility to, uh, uh, to print publications in very different languages uh, from uh, uh, Arabic script for the Ottoman or uh, for the Arabic language or for Persian to uh, Greek, uh, uh, in Greek alphabet, of course, uh, Armenian, uh, or uh, various uh, European languages, both in Latin script or in uh, Cyrillic. And also, Gregor Zelic also knew uh, the local language, the Ottoman Turkish, and probably Arabic and uh, Arabic and Persian as well. Uh, August Pervitic was the 
uh, brother of the famous cartographer uh, Jacques Pervitich. Uh, he also received the Papal Order of Saint Sylvester in 1946. He was serving as the director of uh, Dutch Bank uh, in Istanbul, but he was contributing a lot to the local Catholic community. And uh, one uh, uh, of the uh, commoners, one from the working class was a uh, Croatian guard of the English embassy named Johan, who received the Ottoman uh, Medjidi medal in 1898. We don't know, uh, at least I don't know at the moment, anything else about him, except the fact that he uh, served uh, in the English embassy and actually Croatian served in uh, many embassies and guards. Of course, the Austrian-Hungarian embassy, first of all, but also uh, they were famous and they entered the, 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 the service of other embassies uh, in Istanbul as well. Uh, the title of the book uh, 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 might seem even uh, somewhat uh, controversial because at one, at one hand uh, we have a, a Croatian, which is a ethnic name, a national name, and then uh, Levantine, which is somewhat uh, cosmopolitan. Uh, 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 so uh, denoting, of course, as we know, uh, uh, people, uh, mixture of people of uh, European uh, origin uh, in the beginning of uh, Catholic faith, but later on uh, 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 it included much wider, uh, much wider population. Uh, of, uh, we can say, uh, 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 supranational or cosmopolitan character. So how can we uh, then combine Croatian uh, Levantin? What, what does it mean, uh, Croatian Levantin? Uh, of course, Croatians, as other immigrants from uh, Europe, uh, uh, mixed with, uh, intermarried with uh, local, local population. Uh, men were uh, uh, much uh, less numerous than women, uh, so they married with uh, local uh, women. It is uh, best uh, visible in the case of the Zelic family. Uh, we saw also the case of the Kiriko is the same thing. Uh, in the case of the Zelic, this is 19th century, uh, first generation Antonio Zelic who came from Dalmatia, married with uh, Maria Demi from Marseille. Then second generation Zelic men uh, married with, again, with uh, uh, women of uh, either Western European origin or uh, local, uh, local, uh, local Levantines. Uh, and the first was, uh, first who married a non-European non uh, was Nikola uh, Zelic who married Maria Papadopoulou, a Greek from Kiosk. Uh, in the uh, third generation, uh, these marriages became more uh, interesting because now it included also uh, some non-Catholics, uh, which wouldn't happen earlier. So, for instance, uh, Giovanni Salvatore Zelic married Maria Aslan, born in Rodosto in Eastern Trace. Uh, Ogis Zelic married Olga Konstantinides, Konstantinides uh, Greek Orthodox. For that marriage, uh, they needed a special approval, both from the Catholic Church and uh, both from the Orthodox Church. Again, Rudolf Zelic married uh, Henrika Balit from Ankara, Armenian Catholic. Uh, Felix Zelic uh, married, again, probably a Greek woman. Uh, Richard Zelic uh, married Evelyn Maud Harty, Protestant, uh, English Protestant, uh, and they also needed special uh, uh, permission from both Catholic Church and the, and the, and the Protestant Church, the Church of Crimea. Uh, and the only uh, example when uh, Zelic's men, men uh, married uh, someone of uh, Croatian origin was uh, uh, Giorgio, uh, who married Maria Katarina Amancic, who was, uh, whose father was of Croatian origin, uh, mother was uh, local uh, local Greek, uh, and Sylvester Zelic, who uh, married his cousin Esperanza, and for that marriage uh, they needed special permission uh, from the Pope. 
So these are the only examples. In all other examples, uh, the Zeliches married with uh, people of non-Croatian uh, origin. Uh, so uh, uh, in that respect, of course, they became uh, more of a Levantine, a Levantine uh, character. Uh, some other uh, examples uh, are also interesting. Uh, Charles Albert Cingria, uh, a person of uh, Raguzan origin. Uh, his father uh, from Istanbul came to uh, uh, Switzerland, married a Polish woman. Uh, interestingly, uh, he never, as he says in, in his uh, uh, memoirs, he never uh, thought of himself as Swiss. He said, uh, I'm Constantinopolitan, that is uh, Italo Franco Levantine, uh, as he said. Uh, also, he was aware of his Raguzan origin. Uh, he was a famous, uh, 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 famous poet. Uh, 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 from uh, from from Switzerland. Uh, unlike him, for instance, uh, Giorgio de Chirico, uh, son of Evaristo Chirico, uh, he was born in Volos, Greece. Uh, famous painter. Uh, he died in Rome. Lived most of his life in uh, Rome. He was insisting very much on his Italian identity because uh, he was not accepted as Italian uh, in Italy, because he was born in Greece. He said in his memoirs that when he was asked, where were you born? And he said, in Greece. He said, but then you are Greek. He said, no, but I'm Italian. But no one was actually uh, 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 accepting this. Uh, this is the time of the national states and uh, uh, it, it had to be proven to be uh, of a certain nationality. He said that he even, uh, volunteered for the Italian army in the First World War, but uh, even that did not help uh, him uh, being accepted as true Italian. Uh, his father was born in Istanbul and his mother is uh, from uh, Izmir. So Italians uh, uh, did not accept him as such, but he, he felt that need, unlike uh, Charles Albert Shingria, uh, he felt the need to be accepted as Italian. Uh, Interesting is the case of uh, Evaristo and uh, cousins Evaristo and Isidore uh, Kiriko. Uh, when we speak about the identity, how they shifted, they shifted very, very easily. Uh, for instance, Evaristo received the uh, Italian citizenship uh, on behalf of uh, his grandfather Federico, who was the Sardinian uh, consul. Uh, while Isidore uh, received the Russian citizenship, on behalf of his grandfather Luca and father Federico, who were Russian consul and uh, dragoman. So actually the service of the father or grandfather might determine the, uh, the, the identity, uh, the citizenship of person, even within the same family. Uh, and the, the most maybe striking uh, 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 Example is that of the uh, famous uh, cartographer Jacques Peritich, uh, who was former uh, Austrian citizen. Uh, uh, one of his brothers uh, received the Turkish citizenship. A sister married the Turk and presumably also uh, got uh, Turkish citizenship, while another brother returned to Dubrovnik. So uh, here, we, this is actually uh, uh, the about mid, mid 20th century, uh, that is shortly after establishment of uh, Turkish Republic. Uh, so uh, the Levantines did not enjoy uh, position and privileges they uh, had earlier. Uh, and some opted to uh, leave the country uh, while some accepted Turkish citizenship and others uh, uh, retain their uh, specific Levantine, uh, Levantine uh, identity. So again, within uh, within uh, one family, we can have uh, very different, uh, very different decisions. Uh, from this, we could see yes, Croatians were uh, uh, by definition uh, Levantines. Uh, so it is actually uh, uh, hard to speak, uh, interesting to speak about their Croatian uh, identity. Uh, 
although uh, some of them well, now nowadays uh, most of those who remained uh, in Istanbul there are very very few uh, they don't uh, speak Croatian but they have uh, Croatian citizenship and you can see it uh, in their passports uh, they change from Austrian to uh, as one uh, state uh, 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 disappears uh, then they got uh, citizenship of another state, new state, Austrian, Hungary, then Yugoslav uh, passport, and finally Croatian one. Uh, also, uh, there are some factors actually uh, in that cosmopolitan Istanbul uh, that uh, might have preserved uh, Croatian identity, such as uh, language. Uh, although they usually uh, lose the language in uh, second and third generations, since, since mothers were always uh, non-Croatians, uh, and fathers are not so much uh, interested in preserving one small language as Croatian. There was an opportunity for Croatian children to learn uh, Croatian. In the 19th century, until the end of the First World War, uh, Croatian was one of the elective courses in Austrian school. While after the First World War and establishment of uh, Yugoslavia, uh, Serbo-Croatian was official language in the Yugoslav school. Uh, in the beginning of the 19th century, uh, Croatian enters the was one of the languages of the mass in uh, churches, uh, in all of these three major churches uh, in uh, uh, in Istanbul, Santa Maria uh, Dra Peris, uh, San, San Antoine, uh, uh, San Pietro and Paolo. Uh, and then in uh, in uh, Church of San Anthony, uh, in the 19th century, there was actually uh, first first altar was built in the uh, uh, second half of the 18th century, but also in the 19th century, there was altar of St. Blaise, uh, the Saint, uh, uh, Saint Patron of uh, Dubrovnik. And uh, on that day, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was financed by the uh, Raguzan diplomats in Istanbul. And uh, on the day of St. Blaise, that is the 3rd of February, public processions uh, were held uh, and all the Ragusans and Dalmatians joined that public processions. Uh, then in the 19th century, there was a fraternity of St. Blaise uh, 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 whose members were mostly Ragusans while uh, after uh, the disappearance of the Republic of Dubrovnik, uh, Croatians became most of the Dalmatians entered Austria. Uh, so they actually uh, the Joint Benevolent Society of, Benefic of Beneficenza, which mostly, uh, mo their members were mostly Dalmatians. And then also later there was the Dalmatian Benevolent Society of St. Blaise, and uh, uh, after the First World War there were several Yugoslav clubs uh, in Istanbul. All of these institutions somehow uh, 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 preserved that uh, uh, idea of uh, Croatian, uh, Croatian mess or connection with, with the homeland. Uh, despite the fact that, that uh, uh, the Croatians, Croatian immigrants became uh, after first or second generation Levantines. And uh, here I can show some, uh, uh, some pictures. Uh, this is 19th century uh, Galata, the home of the uh, of the Levantines, including the Croatian ones, uh, Church of Santa Maria Draperis, uh, which held masses uh, in Croatian language from the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, is interior of the church. And then this is the interior of the church on St. Peter and Paul. Uh, Luca Barca uh, is the most prominent Croatian or uh, Raguzan. Uh, buried in that, uh, in that church and uh, in the gray, in the, the courtyard of the church, there are uh, almost a dozen of graves of uh, um, Croatians. Uh, then this is the church of St. George. Today, this is the Austrian uh, church uh, next door to the school of St. Georg. Uh, in the second half of the 19th century, uh, it belonged to the Bosnian Franciscans. So they had, had uh, their mission in the church of St. George. Uh, and this is uh, St. Anthony, uh, uh, 
today's building is from the early 20th century. Uh, it had this special altar of St. Blaise. Uh, at, at that altar, there was uh, this uh, painting uh, done by uh, Sarulo, uh, which uh, on the painting you can see uh, St. Blaise, Francis, uh, St. Francis and Mary. And below them, there is a city of Dubrovnik. And there is also another painting. This one was repainted uh, uh, by the Zelich family in the Almanac, in their Almanac. Uh, there is another painting, uh, most probably again from, um, uh, from the altar of uh, St. Anthony. Again, we can see uh, the city of Dubrovnik below uh, St. Blaise. Uh, this, uh, this graphic here uh, shows uh, uh, there are some steamships and we can uh, conclude that probably the city uh, on the picture is from the 19th century. Uh, Artigiana, <coughs> uh, uh, today's uh, Dushkunle Revi, uh, 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 was uh, established uh, uh, by uh, Giacomo uh, Anderlich uh, from uh, Rijeka or uh, Fiume. Uh, that was uh, 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 that was home for uh, dozens of uh, uh, old uh, Levantines, uh, uh, and it continues uh, to work until until today. Uh, close to Artigiana, uh, there is a, uh, there is there was a street which was named after Giacomo Anderlich, and we can see it on the Jacques Peltier map. This. this is a uh, Juro Klaric with his uh, medals. Uh, he was director of the uh, Gibali tobacco factory. Uh, apart from that, he was uh, 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 director of the uh, Austrian schools in Istanbul. Uh, and he was also involved in the social life uh, of Istanbul. Uh, here is the building of Gibali tobacco factory, which is today uh, Kader Haas. University uh, for the very successful uh, renovation uh, of this industrial heritage. It received a special European award for the, uh, for the very good job they did. <coughs> and eventually uh, famous Zelich family, famous printers. <coughs> On these uh, uh, graphics here, you can see uh, the, the, the print house itself and there are also uh, here a medaille d'or and uh, uh, some awards from uh, various expositions uh, 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 in uh, in Europe. Uh, this is the this is these are Brella, uh, a small hamlet uh, close to Makarska in Dalmatia. This was the homeland of home, uh, uh, of uh, Zelich family. Uh, here we have uh, Antoine Zelich, the first Zelich in Istanbul. Uh, who established the print house. He worked first for the uh, Henri Cariol, uh, who established uh, the first, uh, the first uh, lithographic press in Istanbul. And then uh, Zelich continued actually uh, and established another lithographic press. Uh, here we can see Gregoire and, uh, and uh, uh, Nicola. Zelic uh, brothers dressed uh, a la turca with faces on their heads. Uh, and here are some of the publications. And maybe today uh, the most interesting uh, for us uh, are the postcards. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, postcard of the Zelic family with Galata Bridge. Uh, these postcards are very, very famed. Uh, here we have uh, Plus de Galata, uh, the, the square of Galata. Uh, Karakoy, and uh, this, uh, uh, here are some other scenes from the postcards and uh, Aya Sofia. And then uh, all went well. Uh, Zelich, Zelich Print House received the various awards, including the Sultan. Uh, in the 1940s, they even printed Turkish, Ottoman Turkish Lira. So they were the, one of the greatest print houses uh, uh, in the Ottoman Empire, not just Istanbul. But sometimes, sometimes they had they uh, faced also censorship. Uh, reason for uh, censorship was uh, at one point sometimes books which were uh, 
deemed by uh, Abdul Hamid's censors as uh, inappropriate, uh, uh, or sometimes uh, postcards like these, which were uh, which were uh, confiscated because uh, uh, it was according to uh, the censors, it was not acceptable for uh, non-Muslims to uh, put the motives of uh, of uh, Muslim women or Muslim pious men on the postcards or uh, or uh, mosques. And uh, we can finish with uh, Jacques Pervitic, uh, probably the last known uh, Croatian Levantine uh, in Istanbul. Uh, he was a famous cartographer, as, as, as you know. Uh, uh, I mentioned his uh, family. He made fame for, for these uh, fantastic uh, 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 maps of Istanbul, but also of some other spaces. And uh, as uh, urban historians of, the, of Istanbul say, uh, this is in this ever-changing uh, Istanbul of, of uh, contemporary times, uh, this is uh, uh, a very important source of information because here we can really in detail uh, see uh, where were uh, buildings, what were the streets, and even uh, because this was made for the insurance companies, we can even see the material, uh, uh, the houses were built, uh, and so on. In the middle, there is a, a Artigiana hospice, and uh, above, you cannot, I cannot show it now uh, here. There is uh, also a, a street named after Giacomo Andelic, Andel uh, And I will, I will finish here. Now you can ask me questions and so on. Uh, okay, I'll stop share. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Vieran, for that presentation. Uh, very interesting. Um, we've now got time for uh, questions and comments um, and um, uh, I just want to uh, yes maybe start off if, if you want to ask a question uh, do turn on your video raise a hand use the zoom raise a hand uh, or use the chat function and then I'll read out your questions so does anyone have anything they'd like to comment on or, or uh, raise a question to start off with. Um, if not, while you, you're thinking, um, can, can I ask a, a question, Bjorn? Um, I'm interested in the, um, the role of the Croatian dragomans um, and the Roman Catholic community, and, and in particular, the, Ho the Holy Roman See, the Holy See. Did they actually represent the Holy See? to the sublime port in any way. Um, was, there, was there any formal uh, diplomatic mission from the Holy See? Uh, not, no, not by the diplomats themselves. Uh, they're actually uh, sometimes uh, worked as uh, intermediaries, especially for uh, uh, not just local Catholics, Raguzans, but also uh, Catholics from Bosnia sometimes they they help them get some uh, 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 permissions and privileges uh, at the at the court. But apart from that, uh, we know that some of the uh, patriarchal vicars and some other uh, uh, high-positioned uh, clergy, Catholic clergy in Istanbul, were of Raguzan origin. And of course, uh, they uh, they uh, collaborated with the with the consuls, with the Raguzan consuls in Istanbul. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I see a couple of questions. I'm going to go first to Pariba Zarinabev. Um, thank you so much, Vera. This is a very interesting talk and I'm looking forward to your book. <clears throat> I wanted to see if you could talk to us a bit about your sources, the archives in Dubrovnik, you know, what you have found in, in Istanbul um, and uh, where are you going from here? Because this is fascinating. I would like to see more material on the early modern period because I'm a historian of the early modern period. So I'm sure you have lots. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, of course, uh, the Ottoman archive, uh, the Bajbakanlik uh, archive archive is, uh, is full of uh, uh, documents, uh, especially uh, Ejnebi, uh, 
Uh, je ne bi defter leri. Uh, there are several defters uh, which are uh, considering Dubrovnik, but also, uh, um, of course, uh, the archive of Dubrovnik uh, contains sometimes copies of, of the document, uh, the originals of the documents that are copied in the Ejnebi Defter in Istanbul, but sometimes uh, some originals which, which are not copied in the, in the Istanbul Defters. But sometimes you have something uh, in copy in Istanbul, but there is no original in Dubrovnik. Uh, apart from, from these, these are actually official uh, archives of both states. Uh, apart from that, uh, I found a very interesting uh, uh, sources in uh, in the churches of Istanbul. Uh, uh, I used the uh, uh, baptismal baptismal uh, uh, registry and other registers in the church and some uh, chronicles, which are uh, it is it is not easy to find in this type of uh, registers uh, to to find uh, particularly for instance Croatians or or Ragusas. So it is a lot of work and, and very rarely you find something. But even with, with these uh, bits of information, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, add to the whole uh, picture. And also uh, the archive of uh, SALT uh, uh, in Istanbul has a very, very uh, interesting collection. Even for the early modern period, you can find uh, some very interesting, uh, very interesting stuff. And uh, it is available which was very helpful uh, uh, for writing the book and conducting research during uh, pandemic uh, circumstances. Uh, almost everything is online, uh, both in SALT and uh, of course in uh, uh, Ottoman archive in Istanbul. So this actually made possible to continue research without uh, having to, to visit in person uh, these, uh, these archives. Uh, this is for the early modern period. These are these are the main uh, the main sources I uh, I collected for the nineteenth century. There are, there are variety of of sources uh, everywhere. So uh, uh, while while I'm also uh, a pre modern historian, I'm somehow attracted to the nineteenth century because of this richness uh, of the documents you can find in the nineteenth century. For instance, in pre-modern uh, uh, pre-modern sources, you you do not have almost anything about commoners. You can only have you have only elites, which is very nice. It's very interesting. It's very attractive. But again, I would like to see what the other people, merchants, uh, uh, which appear very very uh, uh, rarely in the sources, what did they do? What the sailors do, and so on. The 19th century, uh, there is plenty of such uh, information. Mostly when they when they fight the law, but uh, uh, also on some other occasions. So it's more balanced, uh, I would say. Okay, thank you very much, Chef Paolo Giardelli, please. Uh, we don't hear you, Paolo. Hi. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Viera. We have been following together with Miyuki. And, uh, yeah, so um, I was um, very interested in one detail that you mentioned. Uh, Luca Chirico was uh, one of the sponsors for the Church of Saint Antoine. Uh, which, the, the 1724 church or? Uh, I think 1724, 1724, yes. 1724. Is this mentioned, I don't remember, and it just, uh, just escapes to me, but um, is this mentioned in Belen or did you find evidence? I think in, in, in Kronaka, in Kronaka, in the chronicle ah, in, of the church, yeah. In the, ah, in the chronicle uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of the church uh, at Saint Antoine. Yeah. And, and so in... So if there is also a description in that document of, of the church. Is there any, any visual? No, 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 no visual. It only says that it was uh, made of uh, uh, wood initially. Wood, yeah. Later it was made of stone. Uh, and uh, since it seems they did not get the real permission from the, from the Ottomans, because establishing new churches was forbidden. So... Uh, it was registered as the house of Luca Barca, which is very interesting. Mm. I don't think this was his house, but uh, uh, because uh, of the position of the church, 
Uh, I think it was in uh, Nuri Zia Sokak, I'm not sure, but most probably this was the position and he lived there. There was also a Raguzan consulate and his house was there also. And there is also French embassy nearby, so... The French, um, yeah, it must have been actually a, a yeah, yeah. really belonging to the, yeah, to the French embassy. Uh, and the yeah. other question about uh, Saint Blaise. Uh, I think there, so you said there were altars dedicated to San Biagio, San Blaise, in mm -hmm. uh, in every ch in uh, each of the three churches. Or no, no, no. Only, you know, no in only Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony. Uh, in Saint Anthony, especially, and the 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 altar piece you showed is uh, a new uh, painting from the twenty from the new church, or or was it? brought from the old church to the new. Do, do you know the date of the... I I, uh, I would have to check in the book. Uh, I don't know the, the date. It was done by a, a Sicilian uh, painter, Sarullo. Sarullo. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's 19th century. So it, it must, it must be from the, from the old church because... It must be from the, I think it is from the old church, yes, yes. Now that's very interesting. It's one of the few things that they could re reuse, I mean, and preserve from the old center plan. I, I'm not okay. sure, but I think it is from the, from the old church. And from the is, 19th, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, it is preserved in the, in the you, can, you can see it in the, yeah, uh, yeah. I think on the second floor somewhere, yeah. they, they, they have it. Yes, yes. So thank you. The other, the other thing, a remark I had, uh, the debate on uh, Giorgio De Chirico's citizenship goes on today in Italy. I mean, it's, very, it's, it's a very strange discussion. And it's obvious that he spoke Italian with the Levantine accent, with this sort of Greek, half Greek, half French, Turkish accent, uh, obviously. And, and I think it would be nice to consider him a Levantine without bothering whether he was Greek or Italian. So, but yeah, anyway, yeah. thank you for bringing the... Thank you, thank you very much for this. Well, thank, thank you, Paolo. Uh, Professor Elsie Duggan. Yes, thank you so much for this lecture. And I very much look forward to your book. Um, as an ethnochoreologist, I'm very much interested in following up on the Corchula, the citizens of Corchula, who were shipbuilders or repaired ships, who found a large number of them during the 1830s. And I'm searching for much more information about the, um, the lifestyle of those shipbuilders. In, uh, in Galata um, and uh, that type of information. It seems that the Corchulani from the town of Corchula are known to have performed their sword dance, Moreshka, for the Sultan and would very much more like to follow up on that information. Well, that is, that is very interesting. I didn't know about Moreshka and the Sultan. Uh -huh. It's very interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there were several families who were very uh, shipbuilders, uh, of course, but also some uh, stone masons. It seems, it seems that the marble from Korchula was brought uh, to Istanbul for some churches. Uh, I would have to, to check the details, but yes, there were some uh, people from Korchula in Istanbul. Yes, well. I do know that many were buried there. I have, I have visit, visited some of the churches and did see mm -hmm. the graves. Um, so that I know that there is, I would like to be able to follow up on information. I know that many of them came through Dubrovnik to, to Istanbul. So I don't know if there's more information in Dubrovnik hmm. um, to follow up on the, sh the, uh, the transfer of, of people. Yeah, 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 that is very, that's very interesting. And what, what we can do is perhaps connect you up directly. Um, so just so that uh, perhaps you can exchange any information uh, that uh, you have, Yaron, with Elsie. Uh, um, yes. I will be glad to, glad to help if, if I can. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, Erzden Merjan. 
Um, yes. Uh, hi. Um, thank you very much. It was a very interesting talk. Uh, my question, I, I have two questions. Um, one is about uh, um, sources, related to sources. Uh, are there any diaries or, um, I don't know, uh, sources belonging to these uh, people? Uh, they, they had personal archives uh, accessible today. Uh, one is about this. And the second question is about, um, I mean, you mentioned that most of them acted as drogamans for um, different um, states. And uh, I was wondering, because as far as I see from the dates, this started more or less in the 19th century, no? Um, I, I am not sure whether... Uh, they somehow replaced fen uh, Phenerites, uh, Greek families, Greek drogomans uh, in this uh, business. Uh, and also I was wondering what kind of relationship uh, they had with other communities uh, in Istanbul at the time, Armenians, Greek uh, community. Uh, do we have any sources, uh, information about that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thank you. Uh... First question was uh, about the archives. Uh, yes, I was lucky to find the uh, family archive of the Zelish family. Uh, 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 most of the documents are preserved by Edwin Zelish in living now in the Athens. And I visited him, he was very helpful uh, uh, with all of these and that was really uh, excellent. However, uh, I did not find uh, diaries or this kind of uh, personal, uh, personal, uh, personal sources, intimate sources uh, of that kind. What I have, for instance, uh, for the 18th century, the diaries of some uh, not relevant things like some of the visitors uh, 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 visiting or some diplomats visiting Istanbul uh, and, and, and like that. But uh, I so far I didn't find uh, anything, for instance, written by uh, by the consuls living in Istanbul, Waikiri, or others. So far, there are some letters and so on. In, in uh, yes, we can maybe consider letters, but they are mostly official, not not of the private nature. Yeah, and uh, sorry, what was the, the second question? Um, about the relationship uh, with the other mm -hmm. communities and the replacement of uh, Greek drogomans uh, in diplomatic mission. Uh, uh, Sorry. <coughs> uh, in the 18th century, uh, uh, Luca Kiriko uh, uh, is in very good terms with uh, Mavro Cordato, Alexander Mavro Cordate. Uh, so there are Probably friends he will receive uh, some gifts from Dubrovnik for his services to to uh, to Dubrovnik, uh, but I don't think there was real. As far as I know, I cannot say whether there was competition uh, between them at the time of of in the first half of the 18th century. As I said, they actually uh, uh, maybe even collaborated. We don't know because these these were uh, uh, not public uh, not public things, but. Uh, we know that Mavro Cordato was helping uh, Raguzans, but, but we don't know what they uh, were they helping actually Ottomans. Uh, so this is this is hard to uh, hard to say. As of uh, the relations with other uh, non-Catholic uh, communities uh, in the early modern period, we do not have much sources. But in the 19th century, uh, especially in the second half of the 19th century, uh, towards the end, uh, they will enter uh, family relations. They intermarried with with uh, non-Catholics, but mostly, uh, uh, not mostly exclusively, actually Christians. Until until uh, the recent times, that was uh, that was so. Even church in the second half of the 18th century, actually in the last quarter, let's say. Uh, was not uh, uh, anymore as strict, insisting only to marry uh, Catholics. Uh, uh, so they married, yes, they married with Greek Orthodox, with uh, Armenians very often, uh, more often than, than the Europeans in the, in the late 19th century, in the beginning of the 20th. But marrying a Turk was a taboo until, until, the, uh, until, until recently.
Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions uh, ready? Um, uh, if not, I, I, oh, Ian, Ian, you've got one. You unmute. Ian, you're still on mute. There is you that go. better? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Vianjan. Um, I've got a background similar to Istanbul that you have. Um, I was at the English High School for Boys for five years in the early 40s, the late 40s, and there was a Zelich in school with me. Mm -hmm. He was older than me, so I don't remember his Christian name, and we weren't friendly, but I presume that he was part of the Zelich family which you mentioned. Can you place a, a boy who would have been about 90 now, who would have been at the, high, Richard, uh, the English High School in the 40s? Hmm. Never mind if you can't. Yeah, uh, I say we weren't friendly. He was older than me, but there certainly was a zealot there. I was there from forty-seven to fifty-one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe, maybe Mario Zelich, uh, who yeah. remained in Istanbul. Many of them went there. Yeah, yeah. but I noticed that there's in the family tree that you brought up on the screen, there was a Richard Zelich who married Evelyn Maud Harty. Now, um, I, expect, I presume he was the daughter of somebody called Henry Harty. Do you know that at all? Uh, no, I don't know the name of the father, no. but maybe I have it in, in the sources. Yeah. I, will have to, I will have to. Henry show. Harty, he was the um, security officer of the British Embassy or the consular, as it was later. And my father took over from him oh, when okay. Mr. Harty retired. My father took over him from him. Okay, that's very interesting. Because <laughs> my, my, my family on my mother's side were Dandrias and Vitalis. Oh, okay. I don't know if you know those names. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. But they were also, um, they endowed the Artigiana. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in the Artigiana, I remember there was a plaque which gave uh, um, credit to the Dandria family for the endowment. And in fact, my mother died at the Artigiana. Oh, so we have connections which are sort of similar to yours, to Istanbul. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this information. Right. Yeah. I can give you more if you like. Yeah, I, very, very interesting. This is might uh, be interesting. Yes. History. <laughs> yeah. Again, we can we're happy yeah. to connect you up. Um, uh, any other questions? I've, I've got one. If 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 not. Um, what what happened to the Zelich and the Jibali businesses? Did they survive into the modern era? Uh, Zelich, uh, Zelich, no. Uh, actually, uh, I've uh, the the print house. Um, uh, 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 actually, at one time there was three Zelich print houses. Uh, different parts of the branches of the family established their own print houses. But it came to the end, uh, not immediately after the establishment of the Republic, as one might think, but actually sometimes in the 40s. And uh, I think the last publication was from the 1950s uh, by the last remaining uh, Zelich uh, print house. Uh, then from the 50s on, I think they started living, living Turkey. And uh, I think nowadays there is only one, as far as I know, only one uh, family which remained in Istanbul, but today they live in uh, Athens, in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, France, uh, and so on, around the world, but not in uh, Istanbul. Uh, Jibali, Jibali continued also to uh, 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 work as, uh, continue to work as a tobacco, tobacco factory. I think it was nationalized, but I, I didn't enter this Republican uh, era uh, it was it was actually very uh, very important uh, uh, establishing very important business uh, it included uh, for the first time a lot of women which were working uh, in the in the factory though their uh, status was uh, very low uh, and uh, and uh, they worked in very hard uh, conditions and uh, they received of course uh, for the time that was normal, they received uh, much uh, lesser 
amount of payment for the for the job which was uh, the same as as the job the man did or maybe sometimes even more demanding yeah. uh, okay thank you very much and just a uh, comment from uh, Ahmad Adda about the zelich maybe it was because of the wealth tax that was uh, brought in um, uh, maybe yeah 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 it might be probably that was I think that was something that that, that ended actually uh, uh, most of the activities the Levantines and non-Muslims were uh, included in uh, okay um, any more comments or questions for Vieran? No? Uh, okay, if not, well, Vieran, thank you so much for your talk and for answering questions. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining and contributing. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, we All our events coming up will be on the website um, and I hope that we will see you again. So thank you and good evening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.